makeup or pre-lab or whatever you want to think of it for the Toxic Bonds Lab. And I'm just going to show you what we have and talk a little bit about what it is that we're going to be doing. So our first solid is uh, sugar, sucrose specifically, C12H22O11. It's the same stuff you sprinkle on your cereal in the morning. Our second solid is going to be sodium chloride, just basic table salt, NaCl. Our third compound is oxalic acid, C2H2O4. Our fourth compound is going to be cobalt. To sulfate, and it's kind of this tomatoey red, pebbly kind of texture. Then we have nickel two chloride, which is green and reminds me a lot of that moon sand that you can buy at Toys R Us. And then our final compound is starch C five H ten O six no C six H ten O five, and it's a very powdery white solid. These first three white solids look almost identical. Sugar and salt, of course, if you've ever made the mistake at home, you know they look really, really similar. And the only difference for oxalic acid is that it's kind of sticky. Uh, so there's your solids, and our first part of our lab is going to be the melting order. We don't really care what temperature they melt at, it's just what order do they melt in. And if after, I think it says in your procedure, after about one minute, if it hasn't melted yet, just to call it a day and say that it's not going to melt. Uh, but so the first thing we got to do is load up our plate. We have this cute little pie plate that is conveniently divided into six places. And we're going to put each of our solids in there, being very uh, observant as to what's going where. So I have a little HFA lettering. So I'm going to call my first well this one right here above the H. And that's where I'm going to put compound number one. A little bit of the first compound, and I'm talking tiny, tiny amount. We don't need a lot on here. All we're looking for is to see if it's going to melt. All right, so we have all six of our samples on the plate. We are now going to get our Bunsen burner lit. Alright, remember when you're lighting your Bunsen burner, close the little dealy thingy. Sorry, I'm forgetting the name of it. All the way and then open it about a full turn. The reason you do this is just so you don't burn your lab instructor when I come by to light it for you. And once you are adjusted, call me over. And that is an ugly, nasty, grody yellow flame, which is exactly what we don't want. So the height of it is actually looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and turn the barrel until I just get the yellow part out of the flame. Actually, my flame is just a little bit tall. Uh, I don't need that strong inner blue cone flame. I just really want the tip of the flame kind of brushing the bottom of my plate. Now. We're going to set it up here, and as soon as it hits the flame, some of them will melt almost immediately, so be ready. Here we go. Remember, we're just going with what melts. Okay, right here we got five has gone, two has gone, one has gone, three. Oh, wait, that's one, two, three. So three went first, four, five, six went second, one went third. And the other two, three, are just there. And we could let this go on for a while if we wanted to, but it looks like the nickel chloride is kind of having somewhat of a reaction. But if you notice, we're starting to get a bubble in our plate, and I don't want to ruin my pie plate, so we're going to go ahead and remove it from the heat and re make our um, data recording. We can turn the gas off at this point. So then, recording our melting order, looking at my little pie plate pan here. Let's see, I'll put it right there so y'all can see it. Uh, remember, this was one, two, three. Three melted first, so the oxalic acid melted first. And then came this guy, so the sucrose melted second. And then this was number six, it melted third. And then I would probably call nickel chloride my fourth. It didn't really melt, but it definitely underwent some kind of a funky change. So we're going to go there, and then you can see the table salt and the cobalt sulfate, they didn't melt at all. So we're just going to call them not melted. 
Yes, it did. The cobalt sulfate did change color a little bit, but it didn't actually change form. So melting, you know, implies liquid or solid to liquid, and that definitely didn't happen here. But it did happen with the nickel chloride. So there's our melting order. Now for the solubility and ethanol part, we're actually going to omit that part. Don't you love it when you omit things? And we're going to go straight to the solubility in water, just really to save time. And because this is the one that we need to test our electrical conductivity. So the solubility in water is what's next. Now we're going to test the water solubility of each of these, starting with our sugar. And I, again, just like the flame test, flame test, not really a flame test, the melting test, I'm going to get a very tiny amount of each solid. Because all that we're going to be looking for is to see whether or not it dissolves in water. Now what we expect is that the ionic compounds are going to dissolve in water and the other guys are not. The covalent compounds, as long as they are nonpolar, which all the ones that we picked are nonpolar, they should not dissolve in water. Although sugar does have some polar side groups, it does have some hydroxide groups on it which enables it to kind of sort of dissolve. It dissolves as far as we're concerned, you know, when it comes to making tea or Kool-Aid or whatever. But it definitely does not dissolve the same way that salt dissolves. All right, so there's all of our compounds in there. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of water. Well, actually, quite a bit of water. Go ahead, I know it says 10 drops in the procedure. Fill it up about halfway. Okay, so I'm going to take my nice little glass stirrer rod and cleaning it off in between each stirring, I'm going to stir each of these. So, the sucrose, yes, it dissolved. The salt, obviously, yes, it dissolved. The oxalic acid, I still have chunks of oxalic acid in here, so no, it did not dissolve. Oh, that's a messed up looking in. Uh, the cobalt sulfate, obviously, I now have pink water, so it dissolved. Uh, the nickel chloride dissolved as soon as I added water to it, so it's very soluble. And then the starch, I actually still have some solid particles in there, so it didn't dissolve, but starch polymerizes very easily, so I actually have a bit of gooeyness going on in here. Uh, it's kind of also what makes starch so good at keeping your clothes nice and crisp is that it does the whole polymer chain things that can be locked in place. So there you go. So we're going to say that starch is not soluble because I do still have quite a bit of solid left in there. So the last thing that we're going to do is the electrical conductivity and we have these cute little conductivity testers here. As soon as I plug it in, you'll see that the light uh, it might or might not come on. I don't know. There it goes. Uh, but it's not flashing, and that's the key. If it's flashing, then that's a positive test for conductivity. And when it's not flashing, that's a negative test. So we're just going to put it in each of the water solutions and see if it conducts electricity. All right, so first up is sugar. Put it in the water. Nothing. So sugar is not conductive. Put it in the salt, and there's a positive test. So salt water is definitely a conductive solution. Next up is the oxalic acid, and it is conductive, which makes sense because it's an acid. Then we have cobalt sulfate. It is also conductive, so positive test there. Nickel chloride is conductive. And last but not least, starch. That's a negative sign. So all of them were conductive except for the sucrose was a no, sodium chloride was a yes, oxalic acid, cobalt uh, sulfate and nickel chloride were all yeses, the starch was a no. And now you have everything you need to answer your post lab questions. And hopefully you can start to tell the difference between um, ionic and covalent compounds.